The game in toxicity is about individual difference. Individual difference in how much stays in your body versus moving out, and individual difference in how reactive you are to that amount. That individual difference in reactivity, we'll talk about that first, can be from a no number of things. You can develop allergies. They're not classical allergies, and that's one of the ways that the advocates kind of get away from this whole issue uh, is, well, no, there's no IgG mercury allergies. They're called type 4 delayed hypersensitivities, and they're very well documented. The woman who's most known for a diagnostic for this, it's called the MILISA test, is Vera Steshko. So is she some wingnut out of left field? She developed it while she worked for AstraZeneca. She was working for a pharmaceutical company, coming up with the kind of allergy test you need, a delayed hypersensitivity test, to tell which one of your workers has developed a hypersensitivity to the drugs that they're working on, from the aerosols they're breathing and such. And while she was doing that, thimerosal was one of the drugs, and she said, well, can I work out these metal ones too? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she works out the metal allergies, they work very well, and they say, well, you know, we really want no part of that. So she split off and developed the, the test on her own. Type 4 delayed hypersensitivities are, are extremely well published. And they have great, of course, it's all, you know, most of the work's done in Europe. Uh, and uh, there's very good correlations between that and uh, a number of autoimmune issues, chronic fatigue issues. Uh, so in these cases, a small amount of mercury goes a long way because you formed a hypersensitivity to it. I'm sure there's other hypersensitivity reactions as well that we haven't even gotten into. But you will find people who have, you know, say maybe one-tenth, uh, you know, this person over here, he's running at 20 parts per billion, he feels okay. We're like, well, that's really high. I mean, even the EPA says you shouldn't be over five, let's bring you down, but he's okay. This person over here is running at two parts per billion. She's a mess. She's got autoimmune problems, thyroid problems, chronic fatigue problems, fibromyalgia. Uh, you detox her for mercury and she gets better. So she had some sort of hypersensitivity. Now that's just acting like there's only one player in the game. Uh, synergistic toxicities is probably the biggest reason that low levels become a big deal. This is something that's called synergistic toxicity and this is why you can't say what is a safe level of mercury. This was a study done by Schubert back in about 1974-77. And what they did is they, they, they took rats and they gave them increasing amounts of mercury, lead, and cadmium, and other heavy metals, but those three for certain. And they measured how much it would take to kill half of them, how much it would take to kill 100% of them, and how much it would take before none of them. I mean, where do you get to the point where only one of them might die? And then they decided, well, what would happen if we mixed the uh, levels of, uh, of you know, uh, like an LD1, the amount that would kill one rat. So they took, they injected rats with the amount of mercury that would kill one of a hundred rats, and they mixed that solution with the amount of lead, one twentieth of the amount of lead that would kill one of a hundred rats. So if it were additive, you'd kill between one and two rats. But when they put, injected that into the rats, they killed a hundred percent. So these, these metals multiply their toxic effect, they don't add them in this context. 